the first is necessaries supplied i'll like to take you back to the topic capacity to contract now what does capacity to contract state capacity to contract said that a person who is incapable to contract a contract with him is void ab initio like a minor however if you supply necessaries to such a person then the estate of such a person is liable to you you can recover money from his estate now again the court is trying to prevent unjust enrichment here now again the court is trying to follow the principle of equity because you should not become poor at the income or the profit of other it would be your loss if you could not recover the amount that you've spent for the necessaries that you supply here it becomes the liability of that unsound person or the minor to pay you back but however we know that minors cannot take personal liability persons who are of unsound mind cannot be personally liable because they are of unsound mind they do not know how to contract what to do in a contract how to do business how to pay money how to receive money they are of unsound mind so their estate is made liable such persons cannot be made personally liable so their estate becomes liable so if you supply necessaries to a minor to a, a person of unsound mind to a drunkard to uh you now somebody who is a lunatic the estate of such a person would be liable for such necessaries that you supply and this actually if you notice is not a contract you are never contracting with a minor you are never contracting with the person of unsound mind because you cannot contract they do not have the capacity to contract yet the law creates a liability here it is not the personal liability it is only the liability vested in the property that you can recover your expenses the money that you have expended for supplying necessary to such minors or persons of unsound mind so this would be a quasi or a quasi contract the next is non gratuitous act uh let us understand the meaning of the word gratuitous here what do you mean by gratuitous gratuitous means gift you must have come across the word gratuity Um, if your parents or relatives are working in some organizations the employer gives gratuity to the employees when they retire so gratuity is something which the employer from his side gives to the retiring employee as a gift so gratuitous is something which is uh, given without consideration which is given uh you know without expecting something in return which is charitable and non gratuitous would be something which is non charitable something for which you are expecting consideration in return you are expecting something in return if you've done something and you do not expect anything in return that will become gratuitous however if you do something and if you return uh if you expect something in return that will become non gratuitous let's 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 take an example uh, you own a car and uh, you know your neighbor comes to your place and tells you uh, to lend your car to him for a day because he wants to go for a marriage now uh, he takes your car now if you do not expect some anything in return if you do not expect 
uh, from your friend anything anything from your friend for taking your car then your act of giving the car to him would be gratuitous however if you charge him rupees 1000 as higher charges for one day then your act will become as non gratuitous so non gratuitous means something where consideration is expected which is not charitable that is when you do a non gratuitous act and the other person enjoys the benefit of that act that the other person is required to reimburse you to pay the price for the act done by you i'll i'll just give you an example uh let's say a goes to b's house and forgets his goods there he goes to his house and forgets his goods there now what does b do what does b do b consumes the goods a goes to b's house the goods that they he had in his hand he forgets his uh, these goods in b's house and b seeing the goods after a left consumed them now in this case is there any contract between the two a and b yes actually if you ask me there's no contract but law creates a contract which is known as quasi contract because here b has a liability to return the goods to a because those goods belong to a and b got the goods because a left them by mistake and if b consumes them he'll become rich at the cost of a at a's expense he'll become rich because he did not expend for those goods yet consumed them so this would be unjust enrichment so law will put a liability on b to return the goods and in case he has already consumed the goods he'll be required to pay the price of goods now in this case a did not intend to gift the goods to b he did not intend to give the goods to b for no consideration it was a non gratuitous act it was a non charitable act since it was a non charitable act and b enjoyed the benefits of the act law created the liability law created liability on b's part to return the goods to a or if he has consumed the goods to pay the price to a for those goods so this point has a couple of conditions i'll just erase this i'll mention the conditions the first condition is the act should be non gratuitous it should be non gratuitous second other person should enjoy the benefit of such act the other person should have enjoyed the benefit of such act so now in this case if the act done by a was non gratuitous and b who is the other person enjoyed the benefit of that act now b would be liable to reimburse a the next point is 
mistake or cohesion when you enter into a contract under mistake or under the pressure of coercion in such a case if the contract is avoided by the aggrieved party the party has to return the benefit any party who has received the benefit has to return it i'll take an example let's say a gunda comes to your house and threatens your father to transfer the title of the house in his name for 5 lakh rupees else he will kill you so under that pressure your father transfers the house to him for rupees 5 lakhs the next day your father cancels the contract because he says he had signed the contract under coercion under pressure and the court rules in favor of your father so the transfer is cancelled now now don't you think the 5 lakhs that were received by your father should be returned yes they should be returned because the contract is cancelled now but is there any contract between you and your father to return the money i mean your father and the gunda to return the money no there's no contract here yet the law creates a liability on your father's part to return the money so the benefit that he had received has to be restored the money that he had received has to be returned so any contract which is made under mistake any contract which is made under coercion the benefit received from such a contract has to be returned next finder of goods i've already given you an example you know you were going from the road and you got a wallet belonging to a person so now you become the finder of the good you become the finder of the good i'll give you one more example in this regard let's say you were traveling in a metro train and uh, one person came along with his bag he kept his bag at the side of the seat and in a hurry he got off the train he forgot to take his bag along with him now you take the bag in your custody what do you think is your position now you become the finder of the goods you have found the goods belonging to someone else now don't you think you become the owner of the good because as the saying goes the finders are the owners so you become the owner of the goods so whatever is there inside the bag now belongs to you isn't it no you do not become the owner of the goods whatever is there inside that bag still belongs to the original owner you do not become owner in any case rather you become a bailee Now, who is a bailee bailee is a person who takes possession of the goods who takes possession of the goods for some time or to complete some purpose for some objective and after the time is completed after the objective is completed he returns the goods so you also get into the shoes of the bailee you also become a bailee 
the important word here is possession he only takes the possession he does not take the ownership he gets custody of the goods for some time he gets possession of the goods for some purpose and after the time has elapsed after the purpose is complete he has to return the goods in the same manner you get possession of the goods custody of the goods for some time that some time is the time that you'll take to search the correct owner search the owner who left the goods and once you know who is the owner you will have to return the goods so your position is similar to that of the bailee you become the bailee and the owner becomes the bailor we'll discuss the responsibilities and the rights of the finder of goods in our next slide the next point is the next type is recover money which is paid to protect own interest now before getting into the detail of this point i'll give you an example okay uh let's say there's this person x now x is a landlord he owns a piece of land now this land is owned by x because he is the landlord and there is this person y who is a tenant working on this land y is a tenant of this land now you know whatever kind of property you own you have to pay taxes if you own a uh, a house you have to pay municipal taxes house tax if you own a shop it's called it's also called by the name of house tax but it's commercial in nature so we call it shop tax if you own a vacant land you still have to pay tax on it it's called as land revenue the lagan as you would popularly know now this person x is already in debts and he has no money to pay the land revenues to the government so what does government do government takes the custody of the land to recover the land revenue it takes this land and gives a notice an advertisement in the paper that it will auction this land so government will auction this land now seeing this advertisement why suddenly thought that this land is the only source of income i have and if the source of income is taken away from me i'll have no livelihood then so what does y do even without informing x he goes to government and pays the taxes that x is required to pay and then what does he do gets the land free and goes to x and tells him to reimburse him the money y goes and tells x to reimburse the taxes that he has paid on his behalf so what does x tell him x tell him x tells him to get lost if i can put it that way because the contention of x here was you didn't ask me before paying the taxes on my behalf did i ever tell you to pay the taxes you by yourself went to the government and paid my taxes 
without even asking me, without even informing me. So now I am not liable to reimburse you. So in this whole transaction, in this whole episode, don't you think why has paid money on X's behalf? So shouldn't he have a right to recover this money? But X's contention is also correct. Y never asked him. Y did not inform him even you know when he you know, went to pay the taxes. So X is not liable. So this case was referred to the court. And court in this case laid down three conditions. Three conditions which if satisfied will enable Y to recover money from X. Otherwise, X was not liable to reimburse the money. So let's see what those conditions were. The conditions were first payment to third party whom is y paying to is y paying to x no he is paying to a third party who is the government here government is the third party payment for others liability why paid the taxes here? Was it his liability? No, it was X's liability. So it was others liability. And final was to protect own interest. Now why did why make the payment here? He made the payment to protect his own interest. He had a vested interest in the land. He did not want the land to get sold to someone else because he thought if the land was sold to someone else, that person might not allow Y to do tilling there, to do farming there. And thus, he will not have any other source of income then. So to protect his own interest, he made payment to a third party for a liability which did not belong to him. So the court held that if these three conditions are satisfied, Y should be able to recover money from X. Y should get the right to get reimbursed from X. And this thing was put between the four walls of a contract. This right, uh, Y's right or X's liability was made a contract in itself by the court and court ordered X to pay the said sum to Y. So you can say that amount which is paid to a third party to protect one's own interest for the liability not belonging to oneself can be recovered from that person and this thing is made a contract in itself by law.